a lot of people in your situation will bypass the Canadian application and the U.S. application and just go straight to the Caribbean. Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I am great. What can I help you with? Uh, yeah, so I just have a quick question related to uh, someone who has been out of school for about four or five years now. I, I graduated with a Bachelor of Science in 2017. Okay. Uh, my undergrad, my GPA was not so good. Uh, I had around a 3.0 uh, okay. cumulatively. Uh, my last two years was around a 3.5. So there was definitely an uptrend. However, um, I've been having quite a significant I guess, hard time applying to schools just because I know that GPA is quite a low buffer. Yep. Um, I'm planning on writing the MCAT uh, actually next month. Uh, my practice test, I'm scoring around a 505 to 515. Okay. Um, so I guess my question is, what would you recommend I do to make up for a lower GPA? Um, and then, of course, considering I have, um, since I've graduated, I've been a clinical research analyst. So I have around 8,000 hours of clinical patient work. Okay. So I've worked on five clinical trials, randomized controlled trials, uh, working in Alzheimer's disease. Awesome. Um, and so, um, and so I've had significant experience with that. Um, and since then I've been really interested in going into psychiatry. So that's sort of my ultimate goal with med school. Yeah. Um, so yeah. What do you recommend I would do in this case? Yeah. So let's get some context first, because I'm sure everyone heard you say that you're going to write the MCAT, which is yes. a, a great reminder that uh, you are not a U.S. person because uh, we don't say write uh, tests here. Um, so the question would be, are you planning on applying to U.S. medical schools or Canadian medical schools? Uh, most likely uh, are American schools, particularly because our, our Canadian system is quite rigorous. Um, the, the barriers of entry are similar, of course, but I, with considering all things considered, with my clinical experience, I think I would be, from what I've been told by friends and colleagues, that the American system might be a better approach for me. Um, so I'm guessing maybe some advice related to how to access it maybe as a sort of international yeah. student yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay, so an international applicant first and foremost, that's that's one barrier. Yeah. Your GPA, you said, is around a 3.0? Yeah. Okay, that's gonna be the biggest issue. Yeah. Is, is your GPA without a significant upward trend. Now, 3.5 is good, but is it good enough? So yeah. if, if your last two years, you said, were kind of a 3.5, that tells me your first two years, if if all things are equal, is 2.5, 2.5, 3.5, 3.5. That lands you at 3.0, assuming all of your credits are equal. Is that about roughly yeah, what it looked the, like? The first, yeah, the first two years were horrible for me. And it wasn't necessarily that the, the content was difficult. It was my the way I studied and I approached the material. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't really get a click of my undergraduate degree uh, until my third or fourth year when okay. I sort of understood how to approach the material. And yeah, uh, yeah so. And post back work in Canada is very different than here in the States. And so there's not the same opportunities to go to and try to improve your GPA post back wise. I mean, they, they have master's programs. And I know a lot of students will go back and just go get a second bachelor's degree in Canada. So if your goal is to come to the States, the question is going to be, have you shown enough academic ability with a 3.0 GPA, GPA with your last two years only, right, in air quotes, being a 3.5. I don't know, right? And nobody will know until you actually apply and get the feedback from the schools and, and that tell you, yeah, that's that's not good enough for us. Right. So that's my, that's my first concern. Okay. My second concern is your MCAT. You're like, I'm scoring between a 50, what did you say, 507 and a- 505 to 515. 505 to five. So to me, that range doesn't mean anything. You need yeah. like, what are your last three tests? What are your last four tests? And if it's like 514, 515, 514, 515, then I'm like, great, you're, you're, you're scoring wonderfully. But if it's 505, 515, 507, 514, like that doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah. So you need that consistency to, to really give you comfort with where you're going to land. For you, there are a few options. One of the biggest issues coming to, to the States is going to be the number of schools that will actually look at you as a Canadian applicant. Some schools will consider you international. Some schools will consider you out of state. They'll, they'll be like, ah, oh, we don't consider Canadian international. We just consider you not in state. 
So you have to find the Canadian-friendly schools. The fact that you have research or clinical experience and research um, from the same job is great. Most Canadians struggle finding clinical experience, um, finding research, or not research, but finding shadowing experience. Um, so you're getting some experiences. So that's not an issue. The next big issue is is funding, right? As an international student, as a, as a Canadian applicant, you won't be eligible for financial aid. So that'll be a big barrier that, that'll be there. A lot of people in your situation will bypass the Canadian application and the U.S. application and just go straight to the Caribbean. Yeah, I've considered that, but I've heard horror stories yeah. about securing residence. The only other alternative is, um, in fact, uh, because I, I'm actually a permanent resident of Canada, so I actually have hold European citizenship. And one of the only alternatives might be go to the Ireland medical schools using yep. the Atlantic Bridge program, okay. um, just because the... The, the rates of people securing residency is much higher than the Caribbean. But I, I, on the note of Caribbean, what would you say would be things to watch out for if that was the approach I would take? Yeah, so so first of all, let me, uh, I don't know where that data is that you're looking at in terms of residency, yeah. it, that Ireland is better than Caribbean. When When I talk Caribbean, I really mean the big four. If you Google the big four Caribbean medical schools, those are the schools that I would look at if if you go to a Caribbean school. Understand that everyone lies about their stats, right? And so the the school may say, hey, we have a, a 95% match rate. Well, maybe, but that's also probably including students that they kicked out from their school who didn't do well enough. And so is that really a true number? So you have to be careful with that. Um, the The biggest thing when it comes to Caribbean is understanding, number one, first and foremost, that you're a good enough student to do well in the Caribbean. Caribbean medical schools are not easier, which I think is a big myth that students have, especially coming from the States. They're like, oh, I'm going to go to the Caribbean. I don't have to take the MCAT. I can get in with a 2.5 GPA. They think it's going to be a walk in the park. And then it's like, no, like it's medical school. <laughs> you, are, you are learning up to a, a standard because you have to take the board exams it's not easier. So if you think you've proven yourself academically, but your GPA doesn't reflect it because you started off so poorly, then that's less of a concern that I have for you. Okay. If you can prove yourself academically from an MCAT perspective that you can do well with a big standardized test, then I have less concern for you. Okay. So that to me are the two big things for Caribbean medical schools. And then the fact that you're interested in psychiatry, psychiatry is actually pretty competitive these days. Um, okay. We don't know where it'll be in four or five years when you're getting ready to apply. So you, you can't really assume those things and you may change your mind in medical school. Um, so really that's the biggest thing is just understanding that for Caribbean medical schools, for any international medical school, coming back to the States if you wanna practice here in the States is going to be harder. Now, if your plan is to go back up to Canada, I don't know specifically. I, I know that Canadian, historically, I think Canadian residency applications, they don't like USDO students. They'd rather have a Caribbean MD student. So they, they, they consider DO from US less than Caribbean MD or, or Ireland MD or whatever. So those are just some, some nuances that you'll have to know from a Canadian perspective, depending on where you want to go back and practice. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, def I like the clarification. Um, and so you think really focusing on, and I guess to maybe, you know, I've, I've even considered doing like a, an SMP, the special master's programs. Mm -hmm. I know the States has those as well. But again, I think the same difficulties might be there, which is, again, that being an international student, the funding. Yeah, the funding sort of, is, is a big one because they're 50, yeah. 50 grand. Yeah, I know it's a high, I've been told it's a high risk, high reward situation where it's like, if you really do great, that's awesome. But if you do really poorly, oh, your chances are sort of shot in the dark. So yeah, it um, hurts. But yeah, so you, you would say, suggest looking at maybe the top four Caribbean schools maybe as a better alternative for me and looking into that more. Is Potentially, that, you know? and not necessarily an alternative, but just probably a a easier path, which I typically don't recommend, but as a Canadian applicant with a lower GPA and and going to have a harder time to do post back work to really help you again as a Canadian, like there are a lot of nuances that just aren't there 
for a U.S. student to be able to kind of nitpick and, and go. And so it the Caribbean may be a great alternative for you. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I'll definitely look into that. Um, well, so thank you. I really appreciate that. Those are sort of the major questions because I know I have the the work experience and the life experience, but yeah. it's just that GPA is just it comes back to haunt me. And then I realize, ah, you know, what are the options? I know some people take a master's approach and then they apply, but then you, if it's not course-based, that might not necessarily improve the GPA as well. So there's exactly. all these, like you said, nuances, but uh, yeah. okay. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take the, you have to take consideration and uh, look up and get more information about that. Awesome. Well, good luck to Perfect. you. Thank you so much, Dr. Gray. Take care.